We live in an age where sustainability is the buzzword. In layman's terms, we can use indices such as the Sustainable Development Goals Index and the Human Development Index to underline the importance of sustainable human development. Even though we don't need historical trends to prove that a lower child mortality rate increases a country's quality of life, What's interesting is the relationship existing between the two types of development. And traditionally, when we're measuring sustainable human development, we stop here. But there's one more correlation that I'd like to plot on our graph, and that's the Da Vinci Global Index. Leonardo da Vinci was one of humankind's most ingenious and renowned inventors, who often looked to nature as a source of inspiration. The Romanian Business and Economic Institute tracks the global activity in the field of bioinspiration by measuring the number of scholarly articles, patents, and grants related to biomimicry. Using these scores, we can trail the relationship between biomimicry, sustainable development, and human quality of life. So what is biomimicry? from mimicking an organism, its behaviors to an entire ecosystem. Biomimicry is implementing natural strategies into our own anthropogenic solutions. Does this mean the next step for innovation could be to take a step backwards? You may be hesitant because this sounds contrary to progress, but learning from nature and adapting with natural biology is anything but slowing down the momentum of innovation. The essence of biomimicry is to advance technology in a continuous method that is harmonious with natural preservation. Biomimicry is often coined as a 21st century design principle, but for most of human existence, we've always mimicked nature because that were the means for survival. And somewhere along evolution, we lost it. That is why I'm here today to introduce a biomimetic lifestyle. Though it often goes unnoticed, enabling sustainable living is frequently a goal that is carefully employed in biomimetic designs. In fact, the classic interpretation of biomimicry is that very design principle and technology. However, I believe that it can and should be applied to our everyday ways of living. After all, our lifestyles are the most widely used designs in everyday life. To begin, we need to understand why a biomimetic lifestyle would be sustainable. Firstly, there are two reasons why a metaphorical life's genius is more than merely clever. Number one, it's efficient. After 4.543 billion years of evolution, nature knows what works and what lasts. Humans have only been on Earth for about 6 million years, civilization as we know it for barely 200,000. And only for the past 100 years have we really started to develop artificial inventions not based on earthly phenomenons. Number two, it's harmonious. Nature's genius thirsts for the continuation of not just one, but overall life on Earth. Take any elaborate food chain and notice the balance between predator and prey. The top of the food chain has never had enough individuals to disrupt the ecological balance they exist within. That is until 7.8 billion humans came along. Another reason why biomimetic designs are game-changing are because they tackle societal behavior by inspiring sustainable action. And this reminded me of when I was learning about indigenous cultures and how I found that their lifestyles were more sustainable. So I reached out to Stephen Paquette, my school board's Indigenous Knowledge Guide, who has come to my school on numerous occasions to give amazing presentations. From talking with Mr. Paquette and better understanding the Indigenous worldview, I gained an immense appreciation for Indigenous cultural values. In our discussion, we talked about how biomimicry is used in Indigenous designs. For example, the very particular way First Nation teepees are built. The entrance faces the east so that you're always greeting the sun as you come out in the morning. Other powerful symbolic associations, such as the teepee floor embodying Mother Earth, the lodge cover symbolizing Father Sky, and the poles that bridge the earth and sky for people's prayers. Suddenly, how a teepee is built transforms from what is just a place where First Nation people live to a reminder of certain teachings every day. Another example are ceremonial lodges called sweat lodges. And like teepees, just the way they are built holds teachings. A sweat lodge is a purification ceremony with both physical and spiritual aspects. 
physically you go in and you sweat out all that is impure inside you. And in the spiritual aspect, the sweat lodge represents something as significant as the womb of Mother Earth. So experiencing the sweat lodge symbolizes a rebirthing ceremony. Finally, biomimicry enables us to observe our resources in a different, more profound way. What many don't quite capture about the land acknowledgement is how it isn't just a reminder of the people before us, but about acknowledging all of Mother Earth that came before the Indigenous people. It's about acknowledging the wind from the four directions, acknowledging water as not only life sustaining, but as sacred and life itself. What we refer to as rocks, Indigenous culture calls grandfathers because these massive boulders have traveled across sea and land for millions of years, and the culture recognizes that they were here before us. Even in every rock, there's water. So the grandfathers are recognized to have life and retain a rich historical wisdom. And this way of acknowledgement is so rooted and prevalent in the sharing of Indigenous cultures. And yes, in black and white, these may just seem like new names. Still, the way Indigenous teachings perceive and internalize all these elements is so fundamentally different that I would consider them different things in entirety. In this form, the name isn't a distant, unconnected label, but grasp meaning, history, and heritage. Further, I'd like to bring your attention to one word and its name, resources a word that perfectly illustrates our present day Anthropocene situation. And in particular, consider its prefix, re, meaning again and again. What does it suggest? That we can come back again and again until there's nothing left? Until we've depleted the resource? The word resources is like an affected marketing scheme. Humankind has found a reassuring strategy to downplay the corrupt values where we overweigh exploitation over regeneration. How have the human desires to break the roof for more in a material world changed the future use of Earth's resources for billions to come? Shifting gears. Indigenous culture calls resources life sources because in principle, they give life. And that is precisely the core of a biomimetic lifestyle. From nature, we can absorb knowledge, but not take life. So how do we implement a biomimetic lifestyle? Imagine stepping into the design process of a 21st century innovator tasked to use biomimicry on the biggest project of your career, your own lifestyle. What is one thing that isn't efficient, adaptable, or harmonious? Acknowledge how it impacts everything it's connected to. And is there a similar circumstance dealt with by nature? The question is, what can we uncover from observing natural problem solving? We can ask, how does nature create community, manage disturbance, process information, and build resilience? Through this process, we view our problems under a less complicated world of understanding. Not because nature is simple or straightforward, but because we are beings that are fundamentally a part of nature. For most of Homo sapiens survival, we've had to observe the world around us and act accordingly. Even though in recent years we've turned the tables, humankind is still programmed to understand nature. And inherently, it's easier to relate to natural complexities than the artificial intricacies of modern day times. And that is how we can develop a more sustainable way of thinking and finally foster a respect for the land and resources we use. Putting biomimicry in action is an opportunity to set our faith in natural elements as old as time. As said by Janine Benyus, author of Biomimicry, Innovation Inspired by Nature, the shift from learning about nature to from nature requires a new method of inquiry, a new set of lenses, and above all, a new humility. The solution? or rather nature solution is a way of living purposely that interweaves both contemporary design principles with the mindfulness of indigenous teachings. Redefining biomimicry, there are often two meanings that come to mind. 
technological biomimicry involving everything from copying bird wings for aviation wonders to using the properties of microorganisms in medicine. Then there is the less common biomimicry that we talked about today, applying bioinspiration for harmonious and sustainable living. And it is this particular meaning and practice of biomimicry that is more closely tied to sustainable human development and accordingly quality of life. Ultimately, embracing biomimicry recognizes sustainable human development and how our inventions fit in with the grand schemes of natural powers. It is the key to innovation for solving the latest problems of the century with nature rather than against it, as we elevate our expectations of what is humanly or naturally possible. Thank you.